the level of scrutiny on politicians is is definitely difficult for a lot of them. And maybe opening up about their struggles might help that. But to a certain extent, I worry that there's an issue of balancing having enough scrutiny when so much accountability is lacked with, for example, everything that's happened with Brexit. For example, Boris is now just out of power, but at least in my view, he essentially switched to being pro-Brexit for his own personal gain. Oh, oh. And, and, you know, sort of the, there's, there's very little accountability for that. So how would you balance this having the fair scrutiny with also having a regard for their status as individuals and their mental health and stuff? Ooh. You see, I actually think that Johnson is a very interesting example. Johnson got away with murder, is the truth. Johnson didn't have scrutiny, he had coverage. He had a lot of coverage, but he didn't really have scrutiny. I mean, the, the people who were writing about him and brought up, they knew that he was lying, but they didn't cover it from that perspective. Um, so I think there's a difference between intense coverage or big coverage and intense scrutiny. I think scrutiny is a good thing in politics. I think you should be scrutinized. But what is different, I think, I guess now, is the fact that when you're out and about, you know, and I still get this, it's like, you know, it's, it's kind of annoying, but you just got to live with it. It's like, you know, when you're on, a, you're on the tube or something, you know, and, you, and <laughs> spot them a mile off, just people just go like that. And they're pretending, they're pretending, <laughs> they're looking at their phone, and you, you know, so I sort of go, whatever. Um, but, <laughs> So, so there's that there's that sort of scrutiny, the feeling actually there's no place you can really kind of be off, as it were. Um, but then the, what I find the problem with our media, particularly on, when you've got a Tory government, I think there's a lack of serious scrutiny on policy. You've just mentioned Brexit, but look at the some of the, some of the stuff that's going on now. You know, the some of the COVID contracting corruption stuff. The press have just given up investigating it. The stuff that's happening in Teesside with the Freeport stuff, right? Now, I don't know what, I don't know the truth of it, but what I know is every time I pick up Private Eye, it's mind-blowing. And nobody seems to have sued them for some of the stuff that they're saying, and yet the rest of the media, part a bit from the FT and a bit from the Guardian, it's like, oh, you know, too complicated or whatever. So, I th- and the other thing I'd say is, if, if, if you want to go into politics, this is one of the points I make in the book, politics isn't just about being a politician. Campaigning is politics. Media can be politics. What you're doing is politics in a different sort of way. You're t- talking about politics is politics. So don't most people who who become candidates to go into into office like you. So we've got an election coming up. Lots of people trying to get selected as candidate now. For a majority, they're they're trying to become an MP. Okay. Once they become an MP, for Even if most of them think, do you know what, maybe I could be prime minister, deep down, most of them know that they couldn't, okay? So it's only really when you get to the very, very top in politics that you get a level of scrutiny that becomes, if you can't handle it, becomes unbearable, okay? Um, or Or if you're a charlatan or if you're a crook, in which case the scrutiny is completely justified. But if you take... Let's be absolutely frank. You take the cabinet, the current cabinet. Um, the truth is, most of them, a majority of that cabinet, would walk down the street and the majority of people wouldn't have a clue who they were. Now, I think that's a bad thing, not a good thing. Uh, they would know Sunak, probably know Jeremy Hunt. Would most people know James Cleverly, the Foreign Secretary? Probably, probably not. Know, most people would probably know Braverman, probably, because of, you know, but not, not for good reasons, but because she's made herself so controversial around a, in a particular policy area. I am, I, every time I go into school, I do this thing with teachers, say, quick, name the Education Secretary. And every time it's, oh, my God, who is it? Right? It's Gillian Keegan. I guarantee Gillian Keegan could walk, walk up and down my street all day and nobody would know who she was. That's bad. Steve Barclay, yeah. a health secretary. Steve Barclay could walk into most hospitals and, oh, isn't that guy? I've seen him on the telly. Who is it? I don't know who he is. Yeah, I mean, I suppose it's, it's, a, it's a weird balance because you don't want 
politicians become celebrity figures, but at the same time, they are in the public eye and they are the people who make who make change. Yeah. And they're the people who who the electorate are then voting for. I, yeah, exactly. And and no, you, look, the celebritization of politics is has been terrible. I mean, I, I actually I find it horrific that Matt Hancock still talks about going on. I'm a celebrity. Get me out of here is a good thing. I did Gogglebox last night, right? Because my daughter wanted me to do it with her, and it's like even as I'm doing it, I'm thinking, oh no, uh, you, you don't. You, that's not how people in politics should be. I think you've got to show a human side. That's different. But you know, so I think it's. I think that I think the other thing that's happened is we've we've sort of dumbed down the debate so much. I mean, you won't remember this at all, right? But when I was a young journalist, um, most of the papers, all of the broadsheets, but it's the tabloids as well, they reserved space just to cover the debates in Parliament, right? When do you ever see Parliament on television now, apart from a vote when it's close and Prime Minister's questions? That's about it. And the budget, that's about it. So people don't even see what happens in Parliament. And if you see a select committee, it's only because there's a particular scandal. That should sort of sense that there's parliament and we should take it seriously. Now, I accept politicians have damaged, done a lot of damage themselves, but I think it's actually the way that the coverage of politics now is so kind of trivial. Um, and, you know, the, the, I've, I've, I'll be honest, I've stopped listening to most of it. And I think, and, and it's not that I don't think the public is still interested. I think one of the reasons so many people listen to our podcast is actually people are more interested in politics than ever. I think a lot of yeah. people have really turned on to politics, but they, they they don't they don't turn on the TV news and think this is kind of fulfilling my desire to know about politics. And the antidote to the thing that we were talking about about social media, everybody wants everything to tweet. Actually, is that you know one of the few sectors that's done really, really well in recent years is books. People are actually reading more books than they did, and I think there's a in some sectors, some sections of the population. I think there's a revulsion to you can say everything in a tweet. You know, it doesn't matter. Does it? There's no need to watch a documentary because you can see five seconds on TikTok. Well, no, I'd rather watch a documentary. So documentaries are doing really, really well as well. 